You're listening to Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there. Also, do visit us online over at quicksurf.com and subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. For those of you who are uh, watching the show on YouTube, please do subscribe to the show and the link up above uh, the video player. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode. Starting off over at uh, shacknews.com, there's a story, uh, Valve Boss is saying that the the living room Steam PCs are coming with Linux support. This has been big news the last couple of weeks, even though we've been kind of on uh, vacation here at Linux Newslog. Uh, Valve has announced that they're going to be releasing uh, living room Steam computers for playing games. And uh, apparently these uh, Linux, these uh, computers, the hardware that they're releasing is going to support uh, Linux. And um, they've been uh, testing and updating select Steam games with Linux support as they continue to test the OS. The underlying operating system that appears to be the one uh, that uh, Valve is going for is Ubuntu, which is kind of cool. So uh, we'll see uh, how that turns out. Uh, we'll be monitoring this as it progresses just to see uh, w- you know, how well uh, S- uh, Valve ha- gets Steam going on Linux. The next story that we have here is from the Varguy.com. A new Linux project aims to bring Mac apps to Linux. Now, for those of you who are Mac users who also like Linux, you know, I, re- I realize this is primarily a Linux based show, but believe it or not, the vast majority of the audience that listens and watch listens to and watches the show is not uh, a Linux user. Um, there's a new project here that if you want to try Linux out and run Mac apps on Linux, just like you can run Windows apps on Linux, a la Wine, uh, there's a new project that's called Darling. It's designed to make OS X software run natively on Linux. The Endeavor raises some interesting points about cross-platform compatibility uh, in the age of the cloud. Um, the stated goal of the Darling project um, is to achieve binary compatible support for Darwin slash OS 10 applications on Linux, plus provide useful tools that will aid, especially in application installation. So for those of you that are not programmers, that simply just means that the project seeks to make software for Mac computers run seamlessly on Linux, very much the same way the Wine compatibility layer adds uh compatibility for Windows applications. So we'll be keeping an eye on this to see what comes of it. Um, It sounds interesting. He does have some screenshots of a basic, you know, Hello World OS X app uh, running both in uh, OS X and in uh, Linux. So it looks pretty cool. From PC World's uh, Linux line, their Linux and open source news and advice blog, Linux, uh, Ubuntu Linux 13.04 hits alpha, but a lot of details are under wrap. Um, the, uh, raring ringtail version, uh, has entered alpha. It's a stage that typically gives fans of the open source operating system an early glimpse at what's to come. Unfortunately, only users of EDUbuntu and KUbuntu, the flavors offering education focus and the default KDE desktop, uh, get the full sneak peek. Um, everybody else is, uh, you know, those details are still under wraps. So we'll be uh, monitoring this to see what comes of it. We've got some more Ubuntu news coming up a little bit later in the show, but, uh, still nonetheless, pretty interesting, pretty, pretty cool. Actually (laughs) from, uh, techcentral.ie enterprise Linux 6.4 beta has been released by Red Hat. Um, you know, Red Hat has been releasing, uh, you know, new versions of software continuously for quite some time now. So this is just one more milestone among the, the many uh, in their quest to uh, release new software. And it looks pretty interesting. A um, couple of highlights. It'll work better as a guest operating systems on uh, Microsoft's Hyper-V virtualization platform. And para virtualization support was added for both Hyper-V and VMware. So that's pretty cool. 
Um, there's new integration between their system security services daemon and Active Directory, so it'll be easier to control identity management uh, in an enterprise uh, IT environment. So that's neat as well. Um, check it out. Um, you know, obviously it's alpha, so don't put it in production. From Ars Technica, Dell has released a powerful, well-supported Linux Ultrabook. This is great news. Um, Dell has started off uh, a, a pilot project project called Project Snup. Let's try that over again. Dell has uh, started, or they did a pilot project. It's called that was called Project Sputnik. Man, that's just hard to say. Um, it was intended to produce a bona fide developer-focused Linux laptop. It was based on their XPS 13 platform. Um, it, you know, Ultrabook is is their base hardware, and what it has produced is the XPS 13 Developer Edition, which is kind of nice. You get an Intel i5 or i7 Ivory Bridge CPU, eight gigs of RAM. Um, it also comes with a 250 gig, uh, gigabyte SATA 3 SSD and a 1366 by 768 display resolution. It's $1,549 and can includes a year of Dell's pro support. So pretty nice. Uh, the version of Linux that's going to be preloaded on it is Ubuntu Linux 12.04 long-term support, plus a few additions. Uh, Dell worked closely with Canonical in getting this all set up and laid out, so should be a pretty sweet little laptop. They've got some some shots here. That it's a tiny laptop, so you know if you're looking for a little laptop that runs Linux and will have really great support, this is definitely a contender that you should check out. Uh, over at VentureBeat.com, uh, the, the president Richard Stallman of the Free Software Foundation. Uh, unleashes the Old Testament wrath on Ubuntu for Linux spyware. So his, just to give a little background, um, what he's calling spyware is Ubuntu in uh, recent versions has started including results from Amazon.com when you go to search your computer. Uh, and he's calling it spyware. Now, you can turn this off. Um, you know, it's not advertising. I, personally, I'm not a fan of it, but that does not mean that uh, I'm going to do what, you know, Stallman here is really advocating that everybody should do, which in his words, uh, give Canonical whatever rebuff is needed to make it stop, quote, unquote. So, Give them feedback, absolutely. To stop using the software, if you can turn it off, I don't think so. Um, you know, it's one of those. You know, unfortunately, you know, he tends to see things in a very binary. You know, black or white. It, you know, it's either good or it isn't. Uh, there's a lot of things in life that you can't do that with, you know, and again, software tends to be, you know, highly personal for a lot of people, a lot of people turn it into wars. And, you know, the only thing I can say is, if it doesn't work for you, don't do it. Go find something that works for you, you should use what works for you. So if this does not work for you, which clearly it does not work for Mr. Stallman, then don't use it. Um, if it does work for you, you know, doing something like turning it off, which is would be my, you know, preferred course of action personally, uh, then that's what you should do. It, you know, this, this is very simple. Um, he's saying that because he, it doesn't work for him, and this is the reason why a lot of software wars happen. He's saying if it doesn't work for him, nobody should use it. And that, you know, that's ridiculous. Anyway, uh, you know, not everybody shares your uh, position, just like not everybody shares my position. We're all entitled to our own positions, and that's re that's reality. I mean, you're just going to have to live with it. So, you know, Ubuntu thinks it's a great thing. I don't necessarily agree. However, you know, not using it is also not something that works for me. So there you go. I'd rather, you know, they gave me the option to turn it off. Problem solved, in my opinion. Again, not looking to start a flame war or anything, but do feel free to email me if you so desire, linux at quicksurf.com. 
and uh, you know, tell me what you think about this situation. But anyway, I, I've given this enough coverage here. He's, you know, Canonical has addressed it to the best of their ability. You know, obviously they're getting a cut of anything from Amazon uh, if you buy something from, you know, the search that they provide, which, you know, in my opinion, that's a great way to support uh, canonical if, if you want to leave it turned on, but you know, they're not requiring it to be turned on and they do give you the option to turn it off. And in my book, that's good enough from CNET over in their UK site, how to install Android 2.3 on the raspberry Pi. This is a nice little how to check it out. If you have a raspberry Pi and, uh, you know, yet one more thing you can do with raspberry Pi. Pretty neat. That is pretty much all we have for this episode of Linux News Log. As always, please do subscribe to the show. You can do so over at YouTube or uh, visit us online, quicksurf.com. All the links to subscribe are in the show notes, uh, which you can find on the homepage. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.